Vice President Award in 2006 for her commitment over decades to achieving equality, leading effective and committed women's organizations, and working for the rights at national and international level. We have a Hello. I'm very happy to be here with all of you today talking about the situation of human rights in the country as well as the status of women's human rights defenders. I'm Ruth Manorama, coming from a Dalit community and uh, I've been awarded 2006 uh, you know, the Right Livelihood Award. I'm very thankful for they considered, you know, that human rights violations against Dalits need to be, you know, given a voice and they must really pursue in achieving, you know, what they've lost really. So, uh, we are now going to celebrate within two days uh, Human Rights Day, Women's Human, you know, Women's Day. For me, Women's Day is really giving me the freedom that we got in our country. 70 years ago, we received this freedom, you know, freedom for all, freedom for women and men, children, young people, aged people, and, you know, physically disabled, many people, the LGBT communities, but all. Human rights belong to all, and, you know, human rights belong to everyone, and we, you know, have the claimant of human rights. I think, you know, I'm very glad to be in a place where human rights are articulated. I'm here for a very specific reason that I want to appeal uh, to all the people who work in UN Human Rights Council and many organizations here, maybe government representatives, there are many. I would be glad if, you know, one from India is here, I would like to, you know, discuss with him more on this issue. I'm here because one of the things I want us to develop and disseminate counter narratives about the positive impact and value of civil society and human, for that human rights defenders are crucial. Because today, like you know, uh, there is so much of negative public opinion about us. That you know, we are this, we are that. You know, that 2011, uh, especially the special rapporteur on human rights defenders after her visit to India in 2011, she has pointed out that the human rights defenders are often labeled as Nazalites, enemies of the state, militants, anti-nationals, traitors, terrorists, and members of underground, foreign agents, and for their right, freedom of expression, peaceful assembly, association, and movement is unlawfully restricted. Defenders in conflict areas face abuses by the security forces, including extrajudicial killings. The human rights defenders get disturbed and they become victims of stigmatization, thus creating negative public opinion. Like we would like to call ourselves, we are, you know, social workers and defending, you know, the women's rights, the Dalit rights, the people who are mostly discriminated against. Like we would like to be called, Ruth Manorama is a Dalit activist working for, you know, the liberation of Dalit people. I mean, if, if I want to quote something, ultimate legitimacy of human rights standard is not of the nation states, but of, you know, human rights activists and who, those who believe in human rights. So I think, you know, that is my plea to all of us that treat us with positive note that we are doing some concrete work bringing to our own, you know, countries what are the violations that has been occurring. Therefore, we enjoy human rights because our own constitution assures there shall be no discrimination on the basis of class, caste, gender, religion and sex. I think we have a very lofty constitution in India, you know, the last 70 years I've seen the nation achieved many milestones in the field of women's empowerment and women's rights. I mean, uh, today if you really see, especially in the last you know, few years, like you know, our experience increases 
incident of violence in its various forms in public and private spaces is one of the critical issues impacting the lives of women and girl children and that are obstacles to their rights and freedom. Today, the repressive social conservatism legitimizes dangerous paths against democracy, individual rights and social justice. The rise of the right-wing authoritative drive affects women in specific ways by attacking women's rights and gender equality. People live in power or infiltrating into the lives of discriminated communities with a dangerous device of many you know, laws, ban on beef, demonetization, looting and plundering of natural resources, mortgaging the country to transnational and multinational corporations and corporate sectors. Today we are witnessing some of the most crimes being carried out with utter impunity. Very recently, I would say that, you know, citizens have been arrested under false charges of seditions and conspiracy. Someone asked me, what is sedition? I told her that I will be answering that. Sedition law is misused by overly by government, illegal and arbitrary actions, often accompanied by its applications. That is an act of seditious. If your acts result in people feeling hatred or contempt towards, contempt towards government. If a person use their either spoken or written words or gestures which are aimed at encouraging people to disobey the authority of the government or resist the authority of the government, these actions should lead people to resort to violence and create public uh, disorder and attempt to make people disobey or resist the government through acts of public disorder or violence. May also be an act of sedition. I think this is from a book called The Colonial Angover. This is a reference from there. Today, five citizens have been arrested under the false charges of seditions and conspiracy. These are citizens who have given their lives to securing justice to tribals, forest dwellers, and neglected segments like the Dalits. That is in our country is 200 million people. In all over the world, 260 million people, not only in South Asia, also in African countries. And wherever Indians went, they carry the baggage of, you know, caste along with them. Therefore, in UK, you have an anti-discrimination law, especially attend to, you know, caste discrimination. There is an atmosphere of fear and intolerance was pervading in India. All our freedoms are in danger. This is a quote. What we eat, whom, to, whom we marry, what we think, what we write and how we pray, anything that asserts diversity and goes against the ruling establishment is under attack, says one of the authors, her name is Sehel. She says that today, rational thinkers like Narendra Dabolkar, Govind Banzare, Eman Kalburgi, Gauri Lankesh, who is a very close friend of mine, have been killed. We are told, don't publish your book, we will burn it. Don't receive your films, or we will destroy theatres. In other words, do as we say, or you and your art will not be safe. These are not quotes. You know, these are not my own words. I have this paper, anybody likes, you know, it can be sent to you. So, we have a lot of, you know, problems in our country. But I'm saying that I'm a patriot. You can give me many you know, names. I'm an Indian citizen. I enjoy the constitutional rights. I must enjoy. People must allow me to enjoy these rights. So I'm a patriot to work for justice for all. Is it wrong? Is it something criminal? Is it something anti-national? So we are questioning that. Not only us, many of us in our countries. Many of us who are gathered here are asking that questions. I think protecting human right defenders is the state obligation, I think. And it is a state obligation to provide safety and security for women's human rights defenders. We are more vulnerable because sexual abuses and violences could be there. Let me say a few words. I must stop here. <laughs> I, I think that many people who are here would be knowing what are Dalits. 
Dalit are a community which are discriminated for years. We experience inherited inequality in history, an historical dimension of discrimination that we face. Others face discrimination, but we as 200 million in our country, that is why in our law, there is special provision to protect us. Today, those you know agencies are more just see and watch. Sometimes they take action, but I think that you know, not need to be done. You, if you really see, maybe I'll read this, Dalit women particularly are more vulnerable. The Dalit women particularly face barriers of barriers to injustice, public policy and services, and are victims of brutal instances of violence. I don't want to disturb you if I name some of them. Do you know that manual scavenging, that the women really take shift in their lives, fill in the baskets and go. This is a forced slavery, forced pattern of occupation. So there's, there are many things. There are young girls in our communities are dedicated to gods and goddesses. They are known that they are slaves to gods called Devadasi system. We have law. We have enough for laws. Law regime is very strong, but implementation is very poor. I think that you know what is really necessary that uh, I think you'll have time for me to say recommendations. Can we, can we go back to the recommendations now? In the second round? Yes. Yeah? Okay, therefore, we must act today. And when I leave this Human Rights Council, I must be very happy to go. Because when I came here, I have that letter called, we are having a discussion on women human rights defenders. Luckily, the print was very dim. I had the fear whether I will be caught and you know, they say, you stay back, Ruth. Here in India, don't go. But you know, it was very light and luckily, uh, you know, uh, he did not ask me, though I got the... Uh, so you, you have to live in this kind of fear. Is that necessary? I want freedom. I want to enjoy freedom that has been given to us by the human rights, you know, declaration as by the Constitution. Thank you. Thank you so much.